and welcome to another episode of Can You Game On It? Wow, that was very passionate. I like that, I like that. Anyways, for this week, we have another gaming laptop ending off the year hella strong or early in the year depending on when you're watching this. Today, we have one of the most expensive laptops that I have reviewed. I mean, I've reviewed some pretty expensive ones and this is one of them. This is the Alienware M15. 15 means 15 inches. And you guys knew that recently I've been reviewing a lot of 17 inch gaming laptops. And for some reason though, a lot of brands are pushing out like the bigger sized gaming laptops. Personally for me, I think gaming laptops should remain compact, small, and just not too big. 15 inches is definitely the love of my life. But before we get into that, CK, do the intro. Get it? Because I'm an alien. Ooh. Wait, do aliens do this? Whatever, just do the intro. Alright, so before we jump into the performance of the laptop, let's talk a bit about the specs. So for this one, it does come with the AMD 5000 series mobile processor, RTX 3070 graphics card, which I absolutely appreciate, a 1080p resolution screen with 165 hertz refresh rate, 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of SSD means that this boy is not the beefiest I've seen, but definitely beefy enough. So let's talk about the design for a little bit. I think Alienware likes to keep it simple. They like to keep it classy. They want to be able to be seen everywhere and they decided to go for the signature Alienware look. When you look at it, you're like, oh my god, alien head, Alienware. Oh my god, cool LED light in the back. And I think honestly, this laptop is Pretty compact, a little bit on the heavy side, I feel, but not the heaviest that I've seen in a gaming laptop. But in terms of ports though, you don't really have a lot. You have like what? Two type A's here. You also have an ethernet port, which I am very, very appreciative because when you play Valorant on Wi-Fi, you're a loser. I don't make the rules. You have your headphone jack. And as well as the back here, you do have an HDMI port, also another Type A and a Thunderbolt Type C. And yeah, it's not bad. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the keyboard. You do get like a 10 kilo sort of thing, no number pad, and it's understandable because it is a 15 inch laptop. You do get everything else in between. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. It's just there, it's usable, it's nice. All right, so now let's talk about the performance. So let's start with Valorant. So Valorant, 150 to 190 FPS easily on the highest graphics. And honestly, this is really, really good. Very, very stable. And the thing is, I mean, I have reviewed a lot of laptops and some of them are even bigger sized. But for some reason though, they have a lot less FPS. But this one though, pumps it out really well. Very, very smooth and stable. But when I'm running Valorant though, I did notice that fans can get pretty loud. So let's talk a bit about how it would be playing Valorant without headphones because Valorant is one of those you definitely need headphones but I tried it out on the laptop speakers. So I just want to say something, big shout out to these speakers because they're hella good. I was actually playing Valorant on Haven yesterday at Sage and you know when you're waiting in between B side and A, you can actually hear people coming in through sewers. So because of that, I was so easily able to pinpoint between A site and B site. And on top of that though, there are some moments where I, I guess this comes down to the limitations of speakers. I wasn't able to pinpoint whether it was in front of B or inside sewers of A. Either way, really, really good for directional audio as well. One of the best I've seen on a laptop. So in terms of the display though, when you're playing Valorant, there are some moments I did mention like 4K does make the gameplay a little bit better. This is only 1080p, so don't forget about that. So there is that limitation there. But what's really interesting though is that I felt like the screen was kind of underwhelming. It wasn't as vibrant as I thought it would be. And on top of that, I mean like there are some monitors which I felt like improves how I can see in a game. This definitely wasn't that. Now, let's talk about benchmarking on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider, one of the best RTX games out there. Very, very beautiful. So on default, 1920 1080p resolution, high graphics. So running the benchmark on that, put 98 FPS, no problem at all. Now, when you benchmark it though, with 1920 1080p, 
high graphics and RTX on high, you do get a little bit less FPS, but it wasn't that big of a difference. You do notice like back then when I turn on RTX on, it'll be a huge difference, like maybe 20, 30 frames different maybe. But this one though, it actually managed to run 85 FPS. That's impressive. And it's hella smooth, okay? Love it. So when, it, when you talk about the fans though, the fans for this does get a lot louder than running Valorant. And for good reason, because you are running RTX, which means more juice is needed, more power means more heat. So the speakers though are loud enough to cover the sounds of the of the fans, which I am very appreciative. But there are some moments though, where you know the game is quiet, they want it to be silent, but then you hear the fans go, Wee! and you're just like, shh. Quiet. So maybe at that part though, maybe you would probably appreciate headphones a bit more. Now, let's talk about one of my favorite games of all time, Control. Game is definitely, I don't say it's underrated, definitely got enough traction, but I will need to talk about it again because I love that game. I love Jesse. So the reason why Control is the third game I would choose is because of the contrast of colors. The game is generally quite dark, but there are moments where the light just flushes in. There are moments where the bright reds that come in from the hiss are there. So that's a great game for you to kind of see the contrast between the colors. So one thing I can say is the screen does the contrast pretty great. It was very easy for me to pick out where the enemies are. But one thing I did notice between Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Control is that the darks can be really dark to the point that I cannot see anything. But nevertheless though, the game still looks really good, it sounds really good, and it's smooth as butter. And all I want to say is, Control is one of those games that really, really emphasizes the RTX. They have a lot of moments where they will really highlight reflections, as well as light, as well as color. So if you want to experience the true definition of RTX, and you want to try this laptop, put it to the test, go and play Control. It's just so, so good. And you don't even need headphones because the, the speakers are just so good. All right, guys, so let's talk a little bit of pros and cons. A verdict for me, pros of this laptop. I love the size, love the compatibility. I love the speakers. I cannot just say how I love this because this is definitely one of the best speakers I've seen on a laptop ever. It's just so, so good. The cons though, like any other gaming laptop, it does get pretty loud. The screen is a little bit underwhelming for me, but, and also if you guys are a creator, you're probably going to need to get a USB 3.0 hub or something like that because there's no memory card reader and not enough USB ports. So if you're just gonna use it purely for gaming, you're not gonna open up you know, a memory card reader or anything, I think you're pretty good. But other than that though, golden question day is can you game on the Alienware M15 2021? abso freaking lootly I love this laptop. It's pretty hella good. And honestly, I'm about to run Shadow of the Tomb Raider again just so I can stare at Lara Croft. I'll see you guys later.